Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Roofer. Um, I'm back here with Matthew Query from Freedom Home Inspections. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, we want to talk, this is something, and we talked about this uh, probably a month or so ago with one of our favorite real estate agents, mm -hmm. hashtag Karen Kitzmiller. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna like link that up in the end, LOE. Mm -hmm. um, she will represent buyers in new construction that, that yeah. never occurred to me before because of it just didn't sure um well before knowing her she she had told me about it but you kind of taught me something else about inspecting new construction mm -hmm. not just at the end of the process but actually the the rough end where mm -hmm. it's framed before yeah, the sheet rock goes on yeah um why is that so important well if you think about it not to simplify it but once you cover it up you it, can't see it <laughs> can't see it anymore yeah um and for an, for an example um when you're doing a rough inspection one of the things i'm looking for is if a you know a plumber or an hvac guy went a little bit crazy with the sawzall and <laughs> cut out or even notched an eye joist you know notching an eye joist you know that's Structural something issue. exactly you, yeah you need to that's something that could come back later even though you're never going to see it it's yep. in the ceiling you're never never going to see it even a home inspector you have if you sell the house they're never going to see it um it could cause a problem mm -hmm. later down the line and you know at the work at the worst time too yeah and this and this isn't just something that happens with really bad low quality plumbers i mean we can sure. we just talked about this in the last Absolutely. video we did if you can have a high quality plumbing company yep. that has a new guy or a guy that's in, having a fight with his wife and just having a really yeah. bad day yeah. and he just blows through a couple mm -hmm. structural beams and cuts them wrong yep. or just doesn't pay attention or mm -hmm. and if it gets covered up and nobody catches that even if they do a walkthrough um if they don't catch it that could be major damage down the road Absolutely. and i mean you may never be able to put liability back on that company so it might be mm -hmm. your insurance or or the builder trying to cover it so yep. and you out of your house for however long or god forbid somebody gets hurt there's so I've much done warranty in my lifetime as well and i've had to move people out of their house yep it's not not a pleasant experience no. <laughs> at all for, it, for up, me or for uproot the your life homeowner. or a couple months while your house gets torn apart and put back together. Yeah. Um, what are what are the kind of things are you looking at in, in those? Is it just the structural stuff? Are you looking at electrical? Make sure stuff's not out of place. Or absolutely. What are what are more common things to look for or catch in that inspection? Mm -hmm. Electrical is a little bit harder um, because the wiring's there. There are no uh, fixtures. Yeah. Um, there's nothing there except for the wiring so I can check wiring and see there's you know, a nail through it or something exactly like that. there's yeah. a nail through it you know if you know I can I can actually identify if there's a smoke detector or not in a room mm -hmm. based on you know what I can see with the wire yep. but um, plumbing I'm looking for leaks um, I actually have a, a, a tester um, that I can put around a copper uh, fitting mm -hmm. on a PEX pipe and I can tell whether it's go or no go so really? yeah, so uh, when the plumber comes in and crimps this ring, if he doesn't crimp it tight enough, it could eventually fail. Yeah. So and this is especially common on three quarter inch pipe. So you've got half inch pipe, which pretty much runs to all of your smaller fixtures, faucets. But your main the, feeds. The three quarter is where you know coming off the street. Yeah. At pretty much eighty at after the pressure relief valve, that it's uh, about eighty psi coming through. Your pipes. So it's pressure. <laughs> it's exactly. Lots, pressure. lots of pressure. Yeah. And so those three quarter uh, crimps are often not tight enough. And so I'll put, I'll go around and I don't check all of them um, because that would, that would take <laughs> forever and I can't access <laughs> three them. years. But what I can do is go in and say, Hey, I found a couple of these. You check need to on. have the plumber come back and check all of them before yep. you cover this up. But the other thing is from a warranty perspective, you have a report now that says, hey, at before pre -dry, before drywall even went in this house, my home inspector found that there was this issue, this issue, this issue, and now we have a problem. Even 10 years down the road, you yeah. can say, hey, this is directly like related. You knew about you it. You knew about it and didn't yeah. fix it. So it's negligence. Yeah. And in a court of law, you're gonna win that every time. Of course, so, and so it just creates a huge level of protection for the Absolutely. homeowner in the case of plumbing that 
fifty nine hundred dollar water bill that yeah your your <laughs> your pipe was leaking and you didn't realize uh -huh. it and the city's like well yeah sorry <laughs> or or lumber that's not pressure treated that's in direct contact with you with your slab or with the yep. ground that you're not going to see because it's covered up with any number of uh, veneers and it creates years of termite damage and yep yep so uh, obviously there's a lot of value to having somebody on your behalf and we've talked about this mm -hmm. um before in in the in the perspective of uh, we do roofing we do exteriors yeah and we've we've trained our guys a lot we see it day in and day out that's mm -hmm. that's our area of expertise i'm not going to try to pull your tooth i'm not going to I'm not going to try to fix your car. I'm not, well, I'm, I've done mechanical <laughs> stuff before, but we're good at what we're good at. Yeah. And that's where we spend our time and time mm -hmm. not spent there. We're spending on family or whatever. Yeah. So 99% of people building houses don't know construction or mm -hmm. they don't know every aspect of construction that they need to see. Mm -hmm. So having a an advocate on their side that goes in and says, hey, I, I have seen this for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. I've been on multiple different sides of these builds and yeah. from seeing it from start to finish, yes. I, I can identify this stuff for you. Mm -hmm. Having that advocate is huge because somebody that knows it is going in on your side mm -hmm. to protect your best interests. Um, so I mean that's to me that's invaluable. It's, yeah, it's, it really it's is a huge, huge value. So, um, do you stay? How how does that work on scheduling side? Is that something that when they start the start the building, they're like, hey, you it's know, here's you our schedule. That. Yeah. So I'm sure you, you know, can get backed up, and a, those are on a timeline. Exactly, and a and a builder has you know a best guess on when they're going to be at yep. a certain spot, and they're going to hopefully communicate that with their client. It doesn't always happen. I'm working with a friend of mine right now, and I've, I've actually backed his pre-drywall inspection up five weeks. So his house is five weeks behind. Wow. And it, it stinks for him because the, the builder hasn't been communicating with him. Uh, but he's got a friend in the business, and I drive by frequently because it's, you know, 10 or 15 minutes from my house in Rock Hill, and I go by and check the, check the stage. But in most cases, you can you can gauge on when the home is going to be in pre-drywall. I always yep. tell um, the homeowner that as soon as you know when electrical is going in, um, we can pretty much set a date because electrical is going to take two to three days depending on the house. Yep. And then you're going to get your low voltage, all your nice cool extra things, HDMI, your phone, speakers. your cable, speakers. Yep. That stuff's going to go in. After that's done, you want me in because all holes need to be drilled by the time I get in there because yep. you know one wrong hole in the wrong spot is detrimental to a eye joist as I yep. already talked And also about. for fire ratings and stuff like Absolutely. that, top and bottom, or I'm, I'm rusty on all that, no, so I don't, yeah. I don't know. No, don't you're exactly it, right. But, but certain areas have to be treated certain ways, yeah. and if they're not. Yeah, HVAC chases all have to be mm -hmm. fire rated and fire blocked and fire foamed and all sorts of good <laughs> stuff. And you can't see that once the sheetrock goes on. Nope. Most county inspectors will catch that. But That's a big thing for a county too. Yeah. But yeah it doesn't two, always happen too if you can get that fixed before the county inspector comes out oh yeah the builders gonna love that yeah well so it's i think it's invaluable even you know i was a little bit annoyed as a builder getting a private <laughs> home inspection just being honest you know because nobody really wants to have their work evaluated but um it also helped me to pass inspections because yep. stuff that i did miss that was simple like that very easy for me to fix and avoided me from delaying another two or three days to get the inspector to come back. Yep. So, so it benefits everybody and yeah. more, more than anything protects the homeowner. Absolutely. So gets you to close faster. Absolutely. Get you in the house faster. Get you in the house faster. Absolutely. Well, Peace cool. of mind. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. Yeah. Freedom home inspections. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, so yeah, thanks for being with us again. Absolutely. If you have questions about um, exactly what we talked about, new construction, uh, inspections having somebody on your side in that process uh, feel free to put it in the comments we'd love to answer or mm -hmm. he'd love to answer it I'm not gonna get into that <laughs> not my area of expertise so thanks again for being with us thanks for watching another episode of our ask the roofer video series if you like the content please like share or subscribe here on Facebook or on our YouTube channel whichever way you prefer to see it and if you have questions we'd love to get your input see what you want to learn about and and do our best to help explain those things to you.